Hello, everyone, for the YouTube audience. Before we get started, just want to say, so we've got Grandmaster Caden Trough here, and we're going to do a quick segment for YouTube, but the rest of this week's podcast is all audio only. I recorded it at the National Open. At the National Open, I got to meet Caden, but I, he's a busy guy, and we didn't yeah. manage to, to connect, but here we are uh, from Zoom at home. So just wanted to get that prologue out of the way, and now we will get to the shared portion. So I am pleased to be joined today by a Grandmaster trainer, former World Youth, youth Champion. He is now streaming as chess sharks along with his compatriot tony patron who i also had the pleasure of meeting in las vegas yeah. welcome to grandmaster kate and trough thank you so much it's uh it, it is a pleasure i yeah I, I know you were you were busy in vegas and i was busy and hey but we we make it work right yeah, I appreciate you taking the time after driving home today. And you were one I couldn't let get away, Caden, because you had a unique role at the National Open. You did not play in the tournament. Could you reveal what yeah. you were primarily doing there? Yeah, so I was there doing game analysis. Uh, two hours after each round started, I would go, I'd set up, I'd be ready to go, and anyone could just come, bring their game, and we would we would go through it. I'd, I'd ask them different questions, what they were thinking. Um, and give my own, hopefully helpful suggestions on what they could have done better. And yeah, it was just a really good time. Yeah, I'm sure you were helpful and they were putting you to work. Every time I walked by that room, you were grinding. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. There were, there were a few people I was trying to keep kind of in my memory is because when it, when it hits, I, so I go for two hours and there are people that, that still are there and want their game. I'm like, okay, guys, I, I would love to go forever, but I got I to gotta eat <laughs> and, yeah, so and try and make a mental note of, okay, this person was so close. Like, I'll make sure to get to him next time and stuff. So, yeah, like, and they kept me busy. Yeah, and the reason that I really wanted to talk to you in particular is because, like, we all want to get better at chess. And it just occurred to me that, and, you know, everyone, you know, 95, at least percent of the people listening are amateurs like myself. Um, yeah. And it occurred to me that you've got this unique role in just looking at game after game. So how many games do you think you looked at over these past few days? How many amateur games? Um, so let's see, it was seven sessions. I think I averaged like seven to eight. Per session. Um, per session. So, I mean, it was, it was a lot. It was, I'm spacing my math, but you know, 50, 50 yeah. plus. And covering a decently wide rating range, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had people that were in the under 1200 come and bringing games and people up to the under 2300. I didn't really have too many from the open, but that's, I mean, that's fair. You know, GMs, I, I don't think they're probably looking for my feedback too much, but. Yeah, um, although very, very wide like, range. People like me were in the open, and I could have definitely used uh, some of your feedback. So, <laughs> so that's on me. Oh, but you, let's get you. to what you learned. So what what did you notice? What was deciding all of these amateur games? Um, so there were a few things that really stood out to me, and and I, I'll, I'll go through them as they as they come to me. But one of the the big things that I I found as like a common thread is people would get into these good positions, you know, they'd have maybe a slight advantage, a little bit better structure, a little bit better pieces. And then when it came time for the, the destructive blow, you know, their opponent messes up and it's time for them to, to strike, a lot of times that was missing. And it was something I, 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 I told a few people and then I found myself saying, you know, probably 10 times to different people, like you just needed a little more oomph in this game. Like it was so good. You just needed that little more oomph. And it was after about five that it hit me like, wait a second, like, is this just a, a common thread? And it's like, yeah, obviously, like I'm, I'm not just saying the same thing because it's fun. Like I had specific moments where they could have put a little bit more pressure on their opponent, where they could have gone after them. That would have made a big difference in these games and really something that i think for a lot of people it's it is that balance of i know i'm supposed to improve my position and i'm supposed to attack but where is the positional and tactical come together and being able to identify that moment is is tough well said, you know, when I was getting lessons and I'm like 2100, but my coach used to tell me the same thing. Like there, there does mm -hmm. come a moment where you have to go for the jugular and it's actually come up, you know, I've been doing this podcast for many years and it's come up before that I think with adults in particular, you know, as we get older, we become more risk averse. 
So I think mm-hmm. it's, it becomes a little harder for us to sacrifice or to really like let it fly, even when we know we have an advantage. And is yeah. this something you saw kind of across the rating spectrum, Caden? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely say uh, for all ratings, it was something that I found myself giving ad- advice or, or finding moments where that, that, that little extra oomph would have made a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And do you think there was any, I mean, I guess it would be hard for you to judge this, but maybe based on what people said, like it occurs to me, there might be some selection bias in what people showed you. Like, did you see more wins than losses? Did people say, I'm not going to show you a s- such and such game. Cause I just blundered. Like what were the interactions like? Yeah, I, I would say I definitely saw more wins <laughs> um, <laughs> where i there were a few people that, were like very and and most of the people that I would say showed losses were very direct like very specific with it um like I had a couple of people that said hey you know I have other games but I played this maybe in round 2 or round 1 I lost it and I want I want to know how I could have avoided losing so there was definitely some people that were like hey I I lost I didn't want to lose <laughs> like what could I have done differently but a lot more that I would say leaned towards the Hey, here's a here's a cool win. Yeah, I think that's human nature. And part of it also might be not just like that they want to show off, but that sometimes if you just lost a game and you're there, obviously, right when the round ends, like even if you're eventually going to look at it, it's like you need a minute to recover, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you want to take your mind off of it. You don't want to go and hear from a from a GM like, yeah, you lost. This is why you lost. You're like, I know why I lost. I know I could have done better. Like, yeah. <laughs> just uh, forget and, about it for a second and when you look at people's games do you ask their rating or do you try to go in cold how how did you approach that um most of the time i could kind of see because they'd give me their score sheets to play through the games and so i they usually they have the sections written uh but i would say for my side i wasn't too like it depended on the game but i i try not to get too wrapped up in in the ratings of the players um, like I keep it in mind, but you know, I want to say like, Hey, this is advice I would give to anyone. I might cater it a little bit because of your rating, but good chess is good chess, whatever the rating. Okay. Um, and so let's go through, let's talk about it. Let's have kind of that, that honest conversation. Maybe I'll be a little nicer if you know, you're lower rated, but, <laughs> but I, I'm still there to give the best advice I can. Okay. And how tiring is it compared to like playing a game, sitting there analyzing nonstop for hours? Um, it gets, yeah, it gets pretty tiring. I, I feel like I was doing very well until the last day. And then the last day, because I was also in charge of the, the Freddie prize, the, the 14 and under best game prize that they, they gave super cool prize. And they, they wanted me to be the, the judge of the games and have the, the young players go submit their games to me. And so, I did game analysis and then I went and like was putting in any games that, you know, last minute submissions and looking through them and trying to evaluate them. And so I did all that and um, amongst other things got to that last analysis session. And I was feeling it. I (laughs) I felt like I had played into the tournament and I was reaching that last round where I just have to give everything I, I possibly still have in the tank. And, uh, yeah, I was, uh, let, let's just say I was drinking some caffeine to, <laughs> to get me there. Totally makes sense. As is often the case late in those tournaments. And before we get to a couple other things, uh, so I feel like it's already one, one bit of actionable advice in terms of like players needing to be more aggressive when they have the edge. Um, any, anything else that stood out, any other recurring patterns from the games? Uh, I, I would say as like a general note, um, be specific, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm going through this game. I'll, I'll ask people, okay, why, why did you do this? And we, we all know in chess, the, the idea of seeing ghosts, you know, mm-hmm. seeing something that we're afraid of, but doesn't really exist. And I would say it connects to that, but it also just connects to your general plan. Like if you want to achieve something, you want to go attack something, you want to maneuver a piece, you want to avoid double pawns, whatever it is, uh, a lot of people have this tendency to say, oh, I just want to avoid it. Oh, I just want to achieve it. And it's like, but why? You know, what's the actual benefit? How are How is that bringing you closer to your goal of checkmate? And the amount of people that when I would 
I would ask that, like, hey, give me a little bit more. They're like, I don't like what you're asking. I don't like that you're questioning me a little bit. <laughs> right. But you do have a point. Like, I avoided these 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 doubled pawns, but in doing so, I made a lot of concessions. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Um, and That's different funny. examples like that. Yeah, and I've noticed also, like, there can be an aversion to calculating and people will just kind of try to explain what they did based on principle. And I'm not saying I'm innocent of it by any means, but, but yeah, another common amateur mistake for sure. Yeah. Um, and Caden, last but not least, so we shared a panel together, the streamer panel, um, where you got to talk about what you and Tony were doing. <laughs> you guys told some funny stories that we probably can't get into. I mean, the panel is going to be online, so I'll link to it and encourage people to watch it. But could you generally describe like, uh, your the multimedia work that you and uh, your chess shark compatriot Tony are doing. Um, yeah, so I I think it's I don't know when it comes to multimedia uh, the big thing for us is is definitely grinding those hours as far as streaming on Twitch. So we we put a lot of effort into that. We try and do forty hours a week um, between the two of us, but pretty often we're we're on together. And, you know, we're trying to post uh, some some clips and shorts from that and interacting with our community and, and Discord. And, and so it's just trying to keep touch with, with everything uh, in, in the, the content and the community. And I would say, especially for us, that our community, like we, we care about a lot. The Vegas was so much fun because we got to meet people uh, from from around the the country or maybe even out of the out of the states that you know has watched us has interacted with us but you know actually meeting in person having that connection so uh yeah we're just we're we're trying to run in the grind and do all the things and then just try and keep touch with the community and and build those relationships because they support us and it means means a ton awesome good to hear and then the the very last thing so on this panel Ben Feingold mentioned this game that Caden played uh, in the world uh, youth under 14. He was black against another young talent named Vorontsov. And Ben's like, this is the best game ever. So I said <laughs> I was going to go look at it. And I went and looked at it. And all I can say, man, is rookie two. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, Sorry, yeah. I'm late to the party. <laughs> oh, it's. Yeah, th that is a game that, that I hold very dear because, uh, I mean, I I I I I wouldn't have taken first in in the world youth in the championship without that game without that move without the combination and Ben Feingold I honestly was just super flattered by how how much he talked about it um and and how high praise he gave it uh but yeah it's it was one of those that I think really emphasized to me that when when push comes to shove, you just you have to do it, right? Uh, my yeah, opponent yeah. played something that looked really scary, and I was kind of shaking a little bit. But you just have to grind and give it the best you can. And for me, that turned out really well. Modern engine approved. It's the only move in that position. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let me ask you. So, <laughs> so when I went looking for that game, I didn't search YouTube. So, like, I'm more of a like I'll just play through the moves guy. Are there many video recaps on that? Do you know? Yeah, there 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 are a few that that I uh, that I've seen. Um, I know I Ben Feingold speaking of did did a more oh, recent one. Yeah, and I know a couple other people at least did one not too soon after. Uh, so yeah, it was. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was. So I'll link to the game score and great, to a, a video recap for for listeners. You you got to check out this game. And Queen F six was a nice final move too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cherry on top for sure all right well Caden I know you've had a, a hectic few days so I want to thank you for taking the time and it was great to meet you out in Vegas and I uh, hope we cross paths uh, hope we cross paths again yeah of course no it was great meeting you and uh, thanks thanks for having me for a quick talk and all those players that brought games to analyze thank you hope I was nice enough and uh, <laughs> good luck <laughs>